Welcome to Christ Center Community on Upper Caswell Lake. May our time together learning about God and His expectations of us be a mighty blessing to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the examples in your written word that illustrate for us the difference between righteous and unrighteous anger. May the Holy Spirit use this message to help us recognize our unresolved anger and where Satan has or is trying to gain a foothold in our lives through that unresolved anger. May the Holy Spirit help us to deal with the anger by way of forgiving others as you have forgiven us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Two weeks ago, we started this spiritual warfare sermon series with Peter's encouragement to Christians to be on the alert for the adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. That is, if we recognize him, we can resist him by standing firm in our faith. Last week, we began to examine the weapons Satan has in his arsenal to use against us. We began our discussion with the weapon of fear, and we discovered that as Christians, we do not need to fear, for God is with us. Today, we are going to talk about another weapon Satan has in his arsenal to use against us, that weapon being anger. When you feel anger, how do you respond? Do you look for someone else to blame? Do you look inside yourself? Do you look to God? Do you look at the circumstances? Anger is a very dangerous emotion, and it is one we must respond to correctly or experience its destructive effect upon others and ourselves. For anger can devastate marriages, separate children and parents, poison other relationships, and can result in violence like murder, road rage, or physical abuse. Anger is a strong feeling of intense displeasure, hostility, or indignation that results from a real or imagined threat, insult, frustration, or injustice towards yourself or others important to you. There are three categories of anger. Category number one, rage, which is an explosive, uncontrolled expression of anger. Category number two, resentment, which is unexpressed anger. When people try to deny their hurts and frustrations, resentment is the result. This type of anger can destroy you from the inside out. Category number three, indignation, which is a righteous anger about injustice, oppression, or an unholy situation. God's anger falls into this category. Anger has its benefits. It can warn us that something on the inside of us is not right. It can move us out of our apathy to accomplish and achieve things. The causes of anger include not getting your way. Have you ever gotten angry when you lost control of a situation? Feeling rejected. Have you ever felt angry for being excluded, overlooked, or mistreated? Fear of loss or the loss of something. Have you ever felt angry when you lost something you cherished? Disappointment. Have you ever felt angry when someone else got the promotion you worked so hard for? Unmet expectations can lead to anger. Past hurts. Have you emotional hurts from the past that have not healed? And every time you think of them, you feel angry and that you have no control? Injustice. When you see other people mistreated, do you become indignant on their behalf? Feeling inadequate. Do you ever compare your life to someone else's life and feel angry? Anger can have lasting effects on our lives if we don't deal with it properly. The physical effect of anger are both immediate and long-term. 
It is devastating to one's body to carry an unforgiving spirit. Unforgiveness divides people, family, friends, and churches, just to name a few. Passive aggression, which occurs when we're angry about something but express our negative feelings in indirect ways. For example, a husband is angry with his wife, so he's late to dinner. Depression, which can be chemical, but most often it's a result of unresolved conflict in a person's heart. That is why in our text for today, Ephesians 4, verses 26 to 32, the Apostle Paul encourages believers to deal with anger quickly before it takes a toll on one's life. But before we read the text, let us consider its context. In this letter from the Apostle Paul to the church of Ephesus, he's addressing the Christian walk, how we walk hand in hand with Jesus, how Christians should lay aside their old self, that is, how they behaved before they accepted Jesus as their Savior and Lord, and put on the new self. That is, the old self is being renewed by the Holy Spirit and the likeness of Christ. For as Christians, we are to be imitators of God as beloved children of God, and to walk in love just as Christ also loved us gave himself for us. Now that we have considered the context for our text for today, Ephesians 4, verses 26 to 32, let us consider the text. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. In this text, Paul directs us to do three things when we are angry. Number one, do not let it lead to sin. Number two, Address it immediately so it doesn't become a weapon of the enemy. And number three, rid ourselves of the anger by being forgiving, that is, following the example of Christ. Let us start with directive number one. When we are angry, we are not to sin. Paul does not direct us not to get angry. Rather, in our anger, not to sin. That is because you and I can have righteous anger. In other words, our anger could be a right action. When we become upset over mistreatment of others, or when we feel compelled to rectify an unholy situation, that would be righteous anger. Moses' indignation at the sin of the people dancing around the golden calf is presented in the Bible as a holy anger in which Moses places himself on the side of God. There are other examples in the Old Testament that reflect human anger as a righteous anger, but elsewhere in the Old Testament, outbursts of anger are depicted as a vice and are rejected as an unrighteous anger. Anger played an important role in many well-known Bible stories. The first person to become angry was most likely Adam, who blamed Eve for their sin. The second person being Cain, who killed his brother, Abel. Moses, Saul, Jonah, and Peter are just a few others who were motivated by anger. Anger is repeatedly named in the New Testament lists of sin. For example, in Ephesians 4, Verse 31 of our text for today, 
Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. In Colossians 3, verse 8, But now you must rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. And in Titus 1, verse 7, Since an overseer is entrusted with God's work, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. Unrighteous anger generally takes one of two forms. Powder keg anger, which is explosive in any one in its past, such as a spouse, is usually taken by surprise. Crockpot anger, which simmers and boils for a time. Some people may be in complete denial about their stewing emotion or may take pride in possessing the ability to control their behavior. But denied anger is like a poison, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Which brings us to Paul's second directive with respect to anger. Do not let the sun go down while we are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. In other words, we are to address the anger immediately so that Satan cannot use it as a weapon against us. When my parents, who had been married for over 67 years at the time God called Mama home, received marriage counselor counseling prior to their marriage, the pastor advised them to never go to bed mad at each other. That would be addressing anger immediately. The anger has already impacted one day. Don't let it ruin another. To address anger immediately, first must determine, first we must determine if we are harboring unrighteous anger. By asking ourselves five questions. Question number one, is my anger directed toward another person? If so, we need to try and identify the person. Question number two, is it without a justified cause? If our anger is selfish, not about the mistreatment of others, or not about feeling compelled to rectify an unholy situation, it's unrighteous, and we need to repent and forgive that person and move on. Question number three, am I seeking vengeance? If we have a desire to get even or to harm the other person in some way for a misdeed, we are not operating according to the will and the word of God. Question number four, am I cherishing anger? We might resist surrendering our frustration to the Lord. Maybe on some level we want to be upset. Unless we release it to God, we'll be unable to experience the freedom he longs to give us. Question number five, do I have an unforgiving spirit? Perhaps you feel that you simply cannot lay down your anger. Then you need to rebuke the unforgiving spirit in the name of Jesus and pray and ask the Lord to renew your heart and mind so that you can place your love of God and of others over your anger. Over time, with the Lord's help, I am confident you'll be able to forgive. Which brings us to Paul's third directive with respect to anger. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of balance, malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. To get rid of anger, we must own up to our anger. Identify the source of our anger so we don't misdirect our response. That is, take it out on someone else. Deal with the anger quickly, trusting in the Holy Spirit within us to give us self-control. With God's help, we can do anything. Recognize all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Yet God was compassionate and merciful. And while we were yet sinners, sent his Son 
into the world to die for the sins of the world, your sins and my sins. Thus, we must forgive others as God forgave us. Christ's willingness to lay down his life for the sins of the world, his willingness to forgive is our model. Learn to identify the things that cause us to get angry. That is, to identify our hot buttons. Those buttons Satan likes to push to make us angry so that he may gain a foothold in our lives through unidentified and unaddressed anger. The night Jesus was arrested, tried for crimes he did not commit, scourged at the hands of the Roman soldiers, and crucified, Jesus had every reason to get angry, and his anger would have been righteous anger because of the injustice of it all. Yet, he did not let any unwholesome talk come out of his mouth, but only what was helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And while he was suffering a horrible death on the cross, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Let us follow his example and graciously forgive anyone who offends us. For anger unresolved becomes a weapon of the enemy. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for your compassion and for your forgiveness. During the days ahead, please convict us of our anger. Please help us be brave enough and honest enough to take a bold look at our anger and to recognize that which is unrighteous anger, that we might immediately forgive the offender so that Satan cannot use our anger as a weapon against us and others. Please transform our hearts into a soft, pliable heart that is not hardened by the lack of forgiveness and anger, but is being transformed into the likeness of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Hopefully you can join us again next week for the next part of our sermon series on spiritual warfare. When God calls you home, may Jesus greet you with, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Thank you.